Hallelujah. It is good to be back in the house of God, as always. Thank you, Jesus. Well, camouflage. We're going to war today. Hallelujah. This kind of brought me back to my army time. When I did 21 years in, I wore camouflage and green for 21 years. So my first 10 years I got out, I didn't wear nothing green. <laughs> I had enough at the time. But it's good to be in the house of God this morning. Welcome each and every one of you today. Thank you, Jesus, that we're here. We are here to celebrate another day that God has given us. Hallelujah. So let me pray before we go into Sunday school. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, Lord God, for all the blessing that you have given each and every one of us and all of those that are looking and listening online. We thank you, Father, Lord God, that your guidance, that your love is forever. We ask you, Father, Lord God, as we go into Sunday school this morning, Lord God, we ask that you touch everyone that is present, touch everyone that is watching on Facebook and YouTube. Hallelujah. We ask that you come into the house of God today and, and send you with your love and your joy with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. We give you all the honor and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Hallelujah. As, as I said, it's good to be in the house of God again. And, you know, to, uh, this today's Sunday school is going to be the, the final segment of where we're going to be talking about justice. And so we, you know, we had uh, two sections already about justice today. We're going to be talking about justice and the margin of and the, and the marginalized ma marginalized tongue twister can't get it out. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So if you have your Bible, get your notepad. So I got some words that I'm gonna I'm gonna give to you to uh, uh, read once we get home. I'm also gonna give you the definition. But when you do your research on these words, uh, it's gonna enlighten you. And so get your notepads out. Take some notes today with these scriptures that we're gonna be going through today. Uh, I think it's a blessing to you uh, to learn what his plan. You know, God had made plans for, every, for the Israelite many, you know, when they came out of bondage. And so he was setting up the way that they should do things, how they should react to things, how they should govern themselves. So God was setting up all these different rules. And as we have been going through, we talked about the judges. We talked about the priests. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about the Israelite. So if you have with me today, open your Bible to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24. We're going to be going through verse 10 through 21 to go over what God has specific instruction on how to do things within the tribe. Okay. This today is uh, uh, some words that we're going to be talking about. Let me give you one of the words that we discussed earlier in the other segment of, uh, of uh, Sunday school was justice. 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 Peace. General respect for others. Justice. A concern for justice, peace, and concern for others. The second word I want you to write down is marginalized. Marginalized where the Bible is talking about it's a person, a group, or a concept. Treat as insufficient. And we're going to be talking about this when we go into Sunday school today. So I want to give you these words so that way you have them. So when we're talking about it, you'll see what it may even mean more. Torah, Hebrew, it says teaching or law. Especially God's law. Okay. The fourth word, pledge. Pledge is something that is given as a security of a loan or something that you had borrowed. So as we go through Sunday school today, we're going to be talking about Tehran. Pledge and raiment. Those are things that we're going to be going through with the scriptures. And so let's get started. First, we're going to go into in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 10. And this is coming from the king. It says that when thou dost lend thy brother 
anything, thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his seven. It says that thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out abroad. On it says that, let's go back to verse 10. It says that when you lend something, this is what God is telling the Israelite. When you lend something to one of your fellow Israelites, you should not. It says that you should not go into his house. Let's say it's time for that person to pay it back. And you go to, to, to that individual home and say, I need my security, what you are gonna be, that, that you have placed, I need it. You don't go into his house and let me have it. Let me take it. That's taken by force. That when you go there, do not go into his own home. Verse 11, elaborate even more. It says, stay outside and your neighbor to whom you're making the loan bring to you. In other words, if I said, if, 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 if I'm borrowing from person A here and I said I'm taking my coat or this piece of paper as guarantee until I bring that coat for that piece of paper. You should not go into the home. So God is telling, is giving the Israelite a and, and how you should conduct your business, how you should do with your fellow tribe, how you should lend money or uh, lend whatever you lend to them, how you should. And more when they go into the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 22, it goes where it even explain even more in the book of Exodus. See, Exodus says that if thou lend money, any of my people that is poor, God is telling them, if that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an un, uh, unusual, neither shalt thou lay upon him unsure. In other words, you should not be mad at this guy if you have the, the ability to lend this person, have the funds to lend the person, or lend the land, whatever it may be, do it. Don't do it because the person is poor, so I'm not going to do it because of that. Go ahead and do it because you are, you have been blessed already. Hallelujah. And another scripture to kind of go along to what, what God was saying to help you out in the book of Deuteronomy is back to chapter 23. This is highlighting what God is saying. And in chapter 23, verse 19 and 20, it says that do not charge. Like, I lend you $10, you give me 50 God said, don't money or food or anything else that may earn interest. 20 says that you, in the King James Version, said, unto a stranger thou may lend upon, let me just read this in, in, the, in the NIV. Fellow Israelite interest. This is on the verse 20, 19. On the 20 it says that you may charge a foreigner interest, but not a fellow Israelite. See, God is laying in the rule for the Israelites, telling them this is what you must do for business with your fellow Israelite. Because, you know, Israelite could not have a slave. Slave. So God is saying that you don't charge interest to them. On or you can. Verse 20, what that says that. It said, but not a like so that the Lord your God may bless you and everything you put in your hand to the land you are entering in to possess. In other words, he's saying that if you follow the rules, he's going to bless you. Then that last scripture there in verse 20 is letting know he is going to bless you for what you're doing, for you following the instruction God has given to the Israelites. He said that you shall not charge interest to your fellow Israelites, but if you have a foreigner in your, in your, in your camp, you can charge them. Hallelujah. So we know we don't charge interest. So if I'm going to use my, my brother here, Brother Doc, uh, being a good friend of mine, I said, Doc, let me borrow $20 from you and I'm going to give it back. Doc, okay, no problem. You're my friend, you're my buddy. I'm going to give you $20, but you give me 25 back in return. But God said, because you all in the same, I, sh I should not be charged interest by Doc. And that's the same thing what God is telling the Israelites. Hallelujah. So me and Doc is going to be straight. I'm going to give him his $20 back. He's going to be happy. And then the way he don't have to say that I owe him anything else. 
docks. I don't want to old dock anything. I want to pay it back right up. And that's with anything today when you look at when you have bills. You, you created the bill, pay it back. You got the loan, pay it back. You borrowed the money, pay it back. Don't expect somebody else to pay your bill. Hallelujah. So what God was telling the Israelites back then, apply today. You make the loan, pay it back. You borrowed my screwdriver, bring it back. You use my hammer, bring it back. But if the hammer is broke, bring me a new hammer. <laughs> Hallelujah. That way happiness stays within. And we're going to go next to verse 12 in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24. God is laying down what he wants his people, how they should conduct themselves. And this is where the last portion of this study about Genesis and Marginal, it says that in verse 12, it says that, And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. Now, when they say pledge, pledge, remember I said earlier, pledge is something that you give, that you gave as security. So, for instance, my best friend, Doc, right here, I said, Doc, let me borrow $20 from you again. And I give you my coat. Well, Doc said, okay, that is fine. But before night falls off, Doc have to give me that coat back. He went and rephrased. He should give me that coat back because the word said, if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. In other words, don't let the sun go down. And what he that person gave for collateral, you give it back to him. Because I'm poor, I need my coat because it's cold tonight. Now, Doc is well off, and he's warm in his house. He don't need the coat. He's just going to sit in the corner and gain dust. But the scripture says right there in 12, And if the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. Hallelujah. Verse 13, look what it says here in verse 13. It said, In any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge, the coat, the jacket, whatever it was that I gave as security, again, when the sun goes down that he may sleep in his own remnant, my clothes, and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. God is saying that if you do what I say, he's going to bless you. He's thankful for that you will follow his instruction. What God is telling the Israelite relates to what we just said in Leviticus 19, chapter thir verse 13. He said, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. In the King James Version, said, Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is high shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So if you hire somebody, God said, if you hire somebody, pay him back the day of. Pay him the day of. Because you hired him for a, day, uh, uh, a day's wages. So if you hired him for that day's wages, go ahead once the day is over with. Because that person who is poor need the money. He need the money. In verse 25 in the book of Leviticus 25, it says that in chapter 25 of Leviticus, verse 35 through 37, it says that, And if thy brother be waxed poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him, yea, thou be he be a stranger or sojourn that he may live with thee. And that's on the King James Version, but what it says that, if any of your fellow Israelites come poor and unable to himself, help them. Today, if you see someone who, who need help, help them. God bless you so much that you're going to, you know, you know someone need help. Instead of you reaching out, reaching out to that person to help them, you're going to just sit back and look. It's just like if you walk in this sanctuary, if you see paper on the, on the, on the, uh, on the floor, pick it up. Help the custodian out. If you see that we in the parking lot, help the deacon that's out there. Go to him and say, let me help you. What you like to do? Just hold up this sign and say, slow down. So slow down. I mean, we want to help those that are in need. If someone is in need and you're able to help them, help them. I thank God every day that he helped me. That's why I try to help everyone I possibly can. Return the favor that God has given to me. He helps me every day. He helped me to get out of bed. He helped me to be able to walk up and down the street. He helped me to get from point A to point B. He helped me to breathe. He helped me every everything that I do in my life. 
So why would I not want to help? Why would I not want to help when God is helping? Hallelujah. Also, what is that? So can continue to live among you. In verse 36, let me just read, I mean, 20. It said, do not take answer from any part of him, but fear your God so that you may continue to live among you. You must not lend money at interest or sell fruit or wine. And I, some of you may remember I have a garden. And many years, we would go out there, me and my wife, and we'll break the ground, we'll plant, and we give it all away. We give it all away. People say, man, why don't charge for it? I can't. I can't charge for it. God haven't told me to charge for it for one, but I can't charge for it because this is a gift of me. He's, he's taking care of my health by letting me go out and exercise. Okay? He let me go out that way. I can be able to walk up and down on the ground that God has set. He let me see the fruits of my labor that God has given to me. He let me do something that he put in my heart to do. So we would go out there and sun up. It'd be hot. The sun down. We'd put everything in the ground, and we watch it grow up. And when it all grew up, that deacon gave it all away. Every bit of it. He said, man, take that. I said, look, if you want to give me something, that's on you. But I'm not charging it. Make sure you understand that. Because God's the help. And we should be helping every day for what we do. There's someone that you may know. You may know someone that need help. Help them. I mean, don't go stand ab ab above your means, but help whatever you can do. So we try to do what God is doing right here with the Israelites. And let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter. And this is God. He said that in Deuteronomy verse 14, it says that thou shalt not oppress a high servant that is poor and needy, whether he be thy brethren or for or of thy stranger that are in thy land within thy gates. For gates is the city. Do not oppress the poor. Just because someone don't have something that you have, I shouldn't have to talk bad about you. I shouldn't have to talk down on you. I should not be saying, well, look, you working for me, so six, why? I should take one of the six. God has given the instruction to the Israelites, which is the same thing that we can follow today. Hallelujah. We can follow the same rules and guidelines today for God. God and brought the people out of, out of the land. He brought them to the promised land. Now he's given instructions on things to do, how to conduct with each other. And that's what this whole justice Bible to, uh, Sunday school has been about, on instructions of what you can do. Hallelujah. In verse 15, it says that at his day, in other words, at the end of the day, the day you're working, thou shalt give him his hire. In other words, if I said I'm going to hire you for $5 today and that the day is over with, pay me the $5. Pay the $5. It's saying, and that day thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor. And setting his heart upon it. He needs some things. He or she needs the money. Okay? You have the money. Let he cry against thee. And that's one thing you don't want. I have doctor and lend me the money. A doctor hired you. I'm using you again, say that. Sir doctor and hired me to do some work for him. He, uh, well, let me break. I hired Sir Doc this time. I didn't borrow money from him. Now I'm straight. I'm doing good. Now I hired Sir Doc to come and take this paper for a dime and put it back in the back building where he moved it, now he's ready to get paid because he's 40. So I need my 10 cents because it's going to cost me 2 cents to buy what I need to buy. Well, because I have more money than him, oh, no, I'm not going to pay you today. I'll give it to you next time or I'll give it to you next week or I'll give it to you when I see you again. You know, God don't want you to do that. These are the instructions that God has given. He says again that he said, neither shall the sun go down upon you. Don't let the sun go down, for he is poor and sat in his heart. He need, she need that money. Let he cry unto the Lord. And if he goes to God, say, look, I was went and worked with this young man, and he promised me $5, and the time is up, and he didn't pay. 
Lord God, please handle this. Intervene on this now. Do something, change. One thing I don't want, and I hope that no one else in here wants, is for God to bring the, his wrath down upon you. Because if God brings down his wrath upon you, I rest assured that there's nothing that I can do to stop it other than to ask for forgiveness. And he may still not stop the wrath. God is almighty. God is in control. God is all powerful. God is above everything. So when he decides to bring this wrath, all thing you can do is fall upon your knees and ask for forgiveness. Because he controlled the world. He controlled the time. He controlled the sun as it comes up. He controlled the sun as it goes down. He controls the wind. He controls everything. So the one thing you don't want is the wrath of God to come upon you. God has given all these instructions to the Israelites back then, which apply to us today. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. That's why I thank God. And, and even when I'm in going to random things during the day and driving down the road, if I see someone, I try to say a quick prayer for them. Because I have been blessed by the, the great one, the mighty one, the awesome one, El Shaddai. I have been blessed by the best. And so I want to give what I have received, what God has given to me, and I want to let the blessing continue to flow. My reward is when I get to heaven, hallelujah, Jesus, when I get to sing that song, holy, 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 that's my reward for what I do here today. God is saying all of you have a chance to do something every second of your life. Every chance you get, bless someone. Bless them with your word. Bless them with a smile. Bless them with a hello. Bless them if you can help them financially. Bless them if you can help them with clothes. But bless them because God has blessed you. And so when I look at these scriptures, when I went through this portion about justice, it's all about what you're doing for the kingdom. God has gave the instruction, gave the things that he wants to do, and how you, want to, you should do it, and so it should be all counted as blessing. And I want to bless everyone. I would like to bless everyone here today. I'm going to give you a blessing right now. God loves you. Hallelujah. God loves every one of you. God sent down his son, and he died for you. He died for me. That's a blessing. He died for me. I'm, I'm taking it. I'm his favorite. He, I, I, you see, I'm taking it. He died for me. So because he died for me, why can't I go out there and do something for someone else? Why can't I follow the instruction that was given to someone to me? We're going to move on. Let's go to verse 16 in, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 16. It says that the father, and, and I, you know, for many years I kind of, with this, didn't quite understand it. But it said, the father shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Verse 17 says that thou shalt not, and we're going to go to three of them, thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger, nor the fatherless, nor take a widow raiment to pledge. And verse 18 says, and it goes on with, but thou shalt remember that thou was a bondsman in an Egypt. So he's telling these children, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee since. Therefore, I command thee to do this thing. And verse 19 says that when thou cut it down thy harvest in thy field and hast begotten a sheep in the field, thou shalt not go back to fetch it. In other words, you cutting corn. I remember mean, one year I had a big harvest of corn, an abundance of corn. It was more corn than we could eat at home. I gave it all away. I was giving the corn away. I was everybody I saw I was giving corn to. It. Couldn't give it all away. It was God touched it. I just had an abundance of it. And I have a good friend of mine right now I've been asking for it, and I still owe him some more corn. So I'm gonna get corn soon, I get it again. But it says that when you work in your fields, your vineyard or whatever you're doing, if you have extra, don't go back. Say, you know what? I saw some more on the, on the vine, on, mo on the tree. Don't get everything. Leave it there for those that are poor, fatherless, widows, 
In other words, leave that for other people to have. You already been blessed by everything. My freezer is packed. I can't put nothing else in. So why should I go back and get some more when I can just give it to someone else? And, you know, that's how we, you know, me and my wife, we, we got what we needed. Then sure we had what we needed for the whole winter. And everything else, we just give it away. God said once you got an abundance of things that, that he have given to you, bless someone with it. Hallelujah. Bless someone. In verse 20, look what it says. When thou beatest thy olive tree, and if you ever seen one, it, it's small when it first come up, real thin. But as they get older, it get bigger and bigger. Have you all seen a grapefruit tree, don't you? I remember when I, you know, I first planted my first grapefruit tree. It was small and thin. I said, that's all right. But then after a while, the tree just kept growing. And the base of the tree was about this round. Next thing I know, the base was this round. And if you leave and if you let it continue to grow, it'll be a huge 25, 30 foot tree with nothing but grapefruits in it. And so I uh you know, we keep our cut down so, you know, me being as tall as I am, you know, we keep our cut tall so I can reach it. Hallelujah. I you know, I know how to get to it. And we use a ladder. Yes, Jesus. But they grow. An orange tree. If you ever seen any type of a citrus fruit. The stem is very small, small as a pencil. But then if you let it continue to grow, it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. I knew this one person who had a grapefruit tree that had got so big, they hated grapefruit. And the tree, the tree has to have been three feet wide. And the tree would have to be at least 25, 30 feet up in the air. But it had grapefruit all over, ruby red grapefruit. They just look so good. And I just, you know, <sighs> I just look at them because I couldn't reach them. But they was good. But anyway, it says that when thou beatest thy olive tree, when you hit that tree, because you notice there's like what they was doing, they had a stick. And they would go to that tree and they would hit it. And the olive would fall. That's what they picked up. So the scripture said, when thou shalt not go over the boundaries again. In other words, once you didn't hit that tree, it's harvest time. I'm knocking down the olives. They all falling down on the ground. Someone is picking those up. Once I didn't pass that tree, I moved to the next tree. I done went all the way down the road, knocking olives down. God is saying here, don't go back to those trees. Let those trees, what it said, it shall be for who? The stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. God said, don't go back. Leave that for them. Because I have blessed you that you're able to go from tree one, tree two, tree three, tree four in abundance. Leave tree one, two, three, four, or whatever the amount it is for those, for it says, for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow. God's wisdom is so great. His grace is good. Back then, when he started, it's all today. And you have that abundance of things. Share the love. Share the wealth. Give to the church what you're supposed to give. Don't hold back your tithes and your offerings. If you're supposed to give 10%, give it. You have 90. That's more than 10. Last time I was counting. So if I'm giving 10, I know I'm going to be blessed because I have 90% of all of it in my hand. I'm giving it every time. If I only have five dollars this week, I only made five dollars. Give that ten percent. Because next week I'm gonna make ten dollars. Give. Give. Don't hold back your blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm getting ready to come to a close. What God is telling us all that you have, you are blessed. You are blessed so much that he is telling you how you should conduct yourself in courts, in the street, in the schools, at home, here in the church. No matter where you at, God is giving you specific instruction on how you should act. He's saying, help others. Help others. Don't be so proud that you can't do it. Don't be so proud that I can't pick up the paper here. 
Don't be so proud that I can't help my sister over here and my brother. God is blessing you. We're going to have questions after we finish up, and we're going to go through a few, a few things. I hope that today this blessed you. I hope that all the Sunday schools this last three weeks about justice for the Israelites apply to you today in your life. Let us bow our heads. Father, Lord God, we thank you, Father, for all those things that you have laid in our life and you have gave to us. Father, we pledge today that our love for you shall continue to grow, that we shall abide by the word that you have said. Father, we ask that you bless this church. Hallelujah. Bless Philadelphia Christian Ministry, Father. Bless this Sunday school. Everyone in attendance, whether they're here or online, bless them. Touch their hearts, Lord God. Touch them in a way that they have never felt before, that they shall hold their head up high and say, God, you are God. Hallelujah, Jesus. That Jesus died upon the cross for me. Today, we ask, Lord God, that we go to war. We go to war to say the word that, the way that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We go to war to tell every man, woman, and child about God. We go to war today knowing that, Father, Lord God, you reign above all. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory in the name, in the immaculate name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.